A demolition derby taking place in Heber tonight. We talked to the promoter of the event as well as some younger competitors. Also, an up and coming sport in the state of Utah, bringing in talent from all over the state and quickly becoming one of the most respected teams in the country. We talked to the Salt Lake Shred in just a little bit. And finally, we sail alongside Sail Park City as they gave us an inside scoop into what they are doing at Jordan Nell Lake. It's all coming up right now on the scoreboard. Tonight is the Heber Valley Demolition Derby. Now this event is a little different than you might think. Not only will there be grown men and women competing, but also kids. Some kids before they even have their driver's licenses. Brent Martindale gives us a little more clarity to this extreme event. Hey, we're with Brindley Broadhead in the Bowman Garage getting ready for the Wasatch County Demolition Derby coming up soon. Brindley Broadhead, thank you so much for taking a minute with us. You're going to be in the Demolition Derby? Yeah, I am. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing. I know there's a Demolition Derby in multiple divisions. Tell me about your division. So we have a bunch of rules that we have to follow, and you follow them, and you build a car, and then you go into a fairground, and you crash them. <laughs> so. Just like that, right? Yeah. And the division you're in age-wise, tell me, are, are you? You're how old are you? I'm 13. <laughs> 13? You don't even have a driver's license yet. Nope. <laughs> and you're driving a demolition derby. So what is the age bracket? It's 13 to 17. So you're going to be against some other teenagers even, right? Oh, yeah. So tell me a little bit. Are you nervous about that? Is this, Or is this something you're just so excited about? I'm pretty excited, except now that days are going shorter, it, I'm getting pretty nervous. <laughs> now that the day's coming up, right? So have you ever done this before? No, I haven't. So my you are time. a first timer. That's so awesome. Tell me a little bit about what your dad and your dad's here with us. What has your dad told you about demolition derbies? Have you watched them? Do you know what to do? Yeah, I have. I've watched them since like I was born <laughs> and um, I've been to a lot of them. So, and I've helped my dad build a couple of them too. So. Oh, nice. And the, the one we're doing here, your car today, does it have a name? Nope. <laughs> Maybe that's something we got to do. We got to come up with a name. So tell me, you've watched this. What is your strategy? What are you going to do to compete in this crazy event? So my parents have been coming up with plans and stuff, and nice. they said to go around the arena with your um, driver's side door towards um, the other competitors. And yeah. Nice. So they have really nothing to else to hit other <laughs> than your front and your back. So do you get a chance to practice this at all before? I mean, there won't be other cars, but are you going to get out there and be able to drive this a little bit? So my parents were thinking that I was going to go into a field and drive it. So Perfect. Right, right here in Heber, right? We can do that anywhere you want to. So as this happens, is this something, you mentioned you're getting a little nervous maybe, but is this something maybe you think you want to always do? Yeah. I'm pretty All sure. right. Brinley Broadhead here with us on Park City TV. Thanks for taking a minute. We were with the famous Brad Bowman in the Bowman Garage getting ready also for the Wasatch County Demolition Derby. Brad, thanks for taking a minute and letting us come into your fabulous garage here. Tell us a little bit about you. I know we're going to talk to you later about being the promoter for the whole event, but tell us a little bit about you. You obviously have a passion for uh, Demolition Derby. Yeah, I've been crashing cars as long as I can remember. Started when I was like five. We would take tin foil and wrap around like Hot Wheel cars, and we'd sit there and crash them. So, uh, I mean, we've been doing it for years. Uh, how many years? So we're talking how long have you been doing this type of thing? And, yes, we're going to age you, I guess. <laughs> this is actually going to be my 20th, 20th season doing this. Okay. So. so how many do you think you know how many events that you've actually done? I have participated in roughly 150 demolition derbies. Wow. 
That's a lot of weekends, right? And a lot of hours in your garage. A lot. So tell me a little bit about your favorite moment. What's your best favorite moment of all those demolition derby? Um, my f- one of my favorite moments would probably be in uh, 2010. Um, I got my first win at a big show and against the state's like best top drivers. So for me, it was like a huge accomplishment. Um, I've, I'd won a couple of shows previous, but they were kind of like a smaller tier show. So that was kind of the one that I felt like I finally had made it. So you're helping, uh, besides these many, many hours that you've done for yourself, you're actually helping others. We talked to Brindley just a little bit ago. Uh, you're, you're giving to the community a little bit. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is get the, the youth involved. There's not a lot of new drivers coming into the sport. It's kind of a dying sport. So we're really trying to get like the youth involved. So we have a class that's, uh, yeah, 13 to 17 year olds. We're hoping that they'll cash in their Wi-Fi password for, uh, some derby, uh, tools to work on derby cars for the summer. So, um, so far that, um, we have 14 people signed up for this event. Um, and we just, I mean, we're just wanting to have have them have fun. So that's all we're trying for is to have a good time and hopefully they get interest, um, get a spark and, and try to join up the sport and hopefully continue it. What are some of the differences between the big the big people and uh, this 13 to 17 division with the cars? Is there any major differences? Yeah. So the, the youth heat is basically bone stock, no aftermarket parts. You buy the, uh, buy the car, pull the windows out. You can't upgrade anything, so you can't weld hardly anything. You basically just have to tie wire everything with or chain it shut. Um, no aftermarket parts, stock motors. Um, it's just pretty much, you know, buy the cars, drive down the road and pull it in. Um, the big cars, the competitive guys, they will be running five to ten thousand dollar engines in their cars. Um, thousands of dollars of aftermarket parts that are built specifically for demolition derby. And in about every walk of life, right? Like people could be, uh, uh, you know, in, in blue collar or they could be maybe wealthy people. There are a lot of people from different backgrounds at this show. You will see people pull up in there on their last dollar, uh, hoping they win money just right. to get gas money to get home. And then there's people that um, are pretty much millionaires that um, don't no expenses spared on their cars. And, uh, I mean, it's a pretty wide variety of drivers. Do it for the thrill of the whole thing and the love for it. So, Brindley, we were talking to her earlier. You're doing this to help her out. What What's she paying you? Uh, right, we're exchanging baked goods. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting a dozen of chocolate chip cookies. Brad Bowman, we're going to talk to you a little bit later at the event as the promoter of the Wasatch County Demolition Derby. Thanks for taking a minute. Thank you. We are joined by the Salt Lake Shred. We're here with Harmony as well as Isaac. Thank you both so much for being here this morning. Thank you for having us. We are very interested about this season, about this team. It's a new team. You guys are in your first season, but you're having a whole lot of success. How have things been going so far? They've been going really, really great. Um, We are a brand new team, like you mentioned, in the Western Division. Um, We were one of three teams added. Portland and Colorado also added a team this season. And so far we are nine and two. And uh, just last week, uh, we beat LA to clinch the number two seed in the Western Division. So we're gonna have a home playoff game, a really exciting opportunity. Harmony, how exciting is it for you specifically to have a home playoff game, to be building a team here in Salt Lake that is growing so quickly? It's wonderful. We went into the season knowing that we could play with the big boys and the first game we were up against the West Division champions that they've won the last two years and we took them down pretty easily and we beat them again this year um, to secure the spot and so it was just really nice to know that we are in the right spot. We're playing with the right people here. Yeah, Isaac, the team seems to have a whole lot of talent that is coming through. Where are you finding this talent from? Yeah, I think one of our kind of grounding principles is that it all comes back to the youth. Um, We have a lot of college talent. Um, We pull from BYU, Utah Valley University, Utah State University, University of Utah, and we're really lucky to have some really talented players from out of state playing with us as well. But kind of philosophically, it it comes back to these 
a lot of these players started in high school and got really good coaching and, and really solid youth fundamentals. So that's where, uh, in my opinion, most of the talent comes from. Yeah, and Harmony, I know that you are actually kind of directly involved in some of this youth development. You have kids that all play. You actually have one who specifically is a national champion recently. Could you tell us a little bit about how the youth are being built up in this sport? Yes, well, the ulti for Ultimate, we think that you need to start young, and we love the fact that we were able to bring a professional team here. But with the Salt Lake Shred, we also have part of our company is Ultimate Play, is part of our um, developmental. And we have community teams for the youth, all the way starting from eight, you know, eight years old and up through high school. And that's what we're hoping to develop is develop our own players right here in Utah. We have so much talent. Lone Peak High School right here in Utah just won the high school nationals. So, and the girls took uh, fifth also. So we have the best talent right here. We don't need to bring anybody in and we're just happy to show that yeah. we have that. Yeah, Isaac specifically speaking on talent, this team is nine and two, like you mentioned, second in the Western region. Where do you think this team plays out in the playoffs? How do you think this team adds up versus the New Yorks, the North Carolinas, the Colorados? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, so far, we've had two chances at playing Colorado. We did unfortunately lose both of them, and and have played, but we've played them very, very tight. Uh, it was just a one-point game the first time we played them. Uh, and San Diego, we've played some really tight games with as well. They'll be the three seed coming in. So um, our home game, uh, you know, you don't want to look past the mark. Our first game is against San Diego. Um, we think it'll be really tight and a really fun matchup. But kind of coming into the season, we didn't think that we needed a couple years to practice and work our way up to play the, the best competition in the AUDL. We feel like from the way that we've played, we can be ready now. And, and there's a chance that if we go in with good preparation and we play a hard-fought game, that, that we could you know really compete at that level. Harmony, I know that the sport is growing very quickly, but I also know that the support around this team is growing very quickly. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the amount of people that are coming to these games and the type of energy that we're getting at Zions Bank Stadium? Yes, we have such a great crowd. Our first home game here, our first game, first season, everything, we actually almost broke the record for AUDL for the highest attendance ever, and that includes during the um, weekend with the championship weekend. And so we've had great crowds. We had a, about 2,000 people to our first game. We're consistently at 800. We would love to have anyone that wants to come out to Zion, ba Zion Bank Stadium. Uh, we have just the best crowd, like I said. What do you attribute that to? Like, like how are people learning about this team and, and how are people, is it just through word of mouth? Is it social media? How are you connecting to your audience? You know, we have social media. We have Instagram, we have a, um, a website, we have billboards, but a lot of it is word of mouth. And once people come, they want to come again. It seems like that's kind of like the sport. There's a lot of up and coming sports that people say you have to go to this event because it's unlike anything else. Is that what you specifically attribute this to as well? Yeah, I think that's kind of our pitch. We think it's a really, really exciting game, very fast paced, you know, teams will score upwards of 20 points uh, per game so you know very high paced very fast but also it's very simple to understand uh, it plays a lot like a combination of, of football and soccer it's kind of free flowing like soccer is but you know it scores a lot more than soccer yeah. does so um, it, it's very fast paced really fun to watch a lot of really big athletic fun plays um, but also kind of simple to understand and it's a, it's a great time as a result would it be fair to say that it's almost a combination of like soccer and football in terms of end zones and things like that, but it's not disc golf, it's not throwing towards a target, you have a moving target who is your teammates, yeah. uh, is that more? Yeah, definitely moving target. Uh, I think, well last time I wore kind of a Fitbit while I was playing, I ran about a 5K over the course of a game. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if there are players running a whole lot more than I do. <laughs> um, so really, really a, a lot of athleticism and a lot, a lot of speed. So there's a game this Friday, and there's a game, uh, as playoffs go on, you're going to be having more games. One is going to be at least here in Utah, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they'll both be here in Utah, actually, um, the playoff games. If we win our first playoff game, we'll go and play in Colorado. But yeah, we have a game this coming Friday, the July 29th, against the Portland Nitro um, at Zions Bank Stadium. And we have a game August 13th. That'll be against the San Diego Growlers. That'll be the playoff game. We'll be playing that at Judge Memorial High School up in Salt Lake. 
Um, you can get tickets for both of those games at saltlakeshred.com, and we'd encourage everyone to come out. Well, Isaac, Harmony, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We will be right back here on Mountain Connections in just a little bit. Just a couple of weeks ago, we got the chance to go out to Sail Park City to take a look at what they've been up to all summer. Hey everyone, right now we are here with Scott Vermaris of Sail Park City. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, for sure, Blake. Thanks for coming out. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this incredible nonprofit that you run, or that you're a part of, I should say. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how long you've been doing it? Uh, yeah, I've been on and off with Sail Park City for about 10 years. I'm currently the, the executive director. Um, I've done everything from running our adult and outreach programs to helping start the junior sailing program uh, over 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just here to make sure that this place functions and we get as many people sailing as possible. What got you into sailing in the first place? What got you into doing everything that you do now on the day to day? I grew up doing it with my family. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, or just outside Cleveland, and uh, so sailing on Lake Erie. Um, it was a family affair. I went to sailing camp as a kid. Uh, I've always been into non-traditional sports, and it was something that I just gravitated to. It's been a lifelong passion for me, and I, I have my folks to thank for, for raising me on it, and since then, I just kind of took off with it and ran. I'm, I'm a licensed captain now, so I've sailed in lots of parts of the world, and I also spend a lot of time right here sailing and racing with these folks, and uh, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm happy be on the water. What brought you to Park City specifically? Skiing and a job doing uh, wilderness therapy, experiential education stuff. Um, I've been between the ski industry and doing the education stuff and sailing uh, throughout my entire career. Speaking of education, you also run a, a children's program for this as well, is that correct? We do. We have a junior sailing program that runs 10 weeks during the summer. Uh, we are on, I think, week seven right now. I'm losing track, but it is really fun. We've got um, anywhere from three to 500 kids through our program on a given summer, and it is totally fun to see any, everywhere from a six-year-old up to a 16 or 17 or 18-year-old. Um, we start them young. It hopefully leads to a junior race team and stuff like that. We teach adventure sailing. Um, sailing doesn't have to just be about racing. It's very much just about seamanship and adventure and being out on the water, but um, that tends to be the direction the kids go. So you'll see on any given day, Monday through Friday, a whole lot of kids out here in different sized boats doing all sorts of fun things. So what are they specifically doing on like a day to day? What is a, a six year old doing and what is maybe a 15 year old doing? That's a good question. So the six, seven and eight year olds are going to be in a boat together. There might be six or eight of them with an instructor or two in a keel boat, which is a larger boat um, with a fixed keel and they're sailing around together. And then once you graduate from that phase, you get a little older and more independent, you get into your own small dinghy. Uh, dinghy is a very small boat that can tip over. Um, it does not have a fixed keel. It has a dagger board that is not full of weight. So it can flip over and you might sail with a partner at that age or you might be out on your own and you learn how to sail a very small bathtub sized boat and then you graduate to a slightly bigger boat called an RS Terra. Um, it starts with prams, it goes Terras, and then we'll um, get kids into a two person boat called Double Handed. Um, it's called a 420, which is a collegiate racing boat. Um, has a trapeze where you hang out off the side of the boat to counterweight it and get going really fast. They're very exciting. Um, and then lasers, the boats you'll see tonight. Um, we get kids that are training in those uh, boats as well. And uh, and we just want to keep kids sailing. The whole thing is pathways to what, what comes next as you get older. And some kids will aspire to, we have a high school team and you can sail in college and then hopefully into adulthood. So... Yeah, it's it it is an easy it should be an easy flow into the boats that we sail also on Thursday nights because we have keelboat racing and those are great ways for once you go from dinghy sailing and you want to be with a team and maybe a more dry experience as opposed to like being in the water. Um, there's just so many things that they can be doing. Speaking a little bit about tonight, I wanted to ask you about what are we going to be doing tonight? I know there's, yeah. I know we've talked about it, but what is the audience, what can they expect from what we're doing tonight? Okay, uh, tonight is Tuesday night, dinghy sailing, dinghy racing night. So for us, we call it laser night because we don't have another dinghy fleet that we uh, typically race on Tuesdays. We're growing that in the future, we hope, but you will see a class of laser sailboats tonight. It's an Olympic class boat. Uh, it's a one design boat, meaning that all the boats are the exact same. And if you go to a regatta or a uh, a competition that's more formal than just uh, like an organization or like club racing night all the boats are checked that they're um, class legal sails and parts and everything so it's a, it's a race about it's all about the sailor not the boat and so tonight we'll be sailing lasers um, you will maybe see some uh, smaller 
sail rigs for like a, a lighter weight person or for kids and those rate a little bit differently but for the most part we'll have laser full rigs out on the water tonight it's a 14 foot boat it's a small fast boat with a large sail plan so they tip over really easily and depending on the wind it might not be that windy tonight but when it's windy it is action-packed people are in the water they're flipping over all the time um, but it's really cool so we are um, going around a, a race course we sail upwind and then downwind there's an imaginary start line which is also the finish line um, sailboat racing is very interesting it's it's um it's a mind game it's a battle between you and uh between yourself nature and um and your opponent and so you're using the rules as one way to play strategy you're looking for wind shifts and you're learning how to sail your boat fast and efficiently and making a lot of tactical decisions as you go around the course it's very exciting how long is the course and how long do these races typically last Okay, so I think tonight races will probably be about um, 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how big the race committee makes the course. They'll set the course so that it's very square to the wind direction, and then they'll decide um, exactly how, how big they want to make it. I'm guessing that races will probably be 10 or 15 minutes tonight, and... Um, yeah, and they also decide whether or not we're going to go once around or twice around. If they say twice around, it could be a longer race. That could be more like 20, you know, 30 minutes, depending if the wind dies. And we go and we make sure everybody finishes. It could turn into a longer race. I mean, I've seen races out here on Tuesdays go more than 30 minutes. But that's kind of rare. That'd be long. Well, that's what we're here for. We want to be educated on sailing. Scott, thank you so much for the for time. Sure, really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. On Tuesday, we will be headed to Camas as well as Heber as we get ready for the school year. Right, as a coaching staff, as, as the core group of assistants from last year together, we were a good group that worked really well together, mm -hmm. right? And, and we couldn't take what was happening to these kids. They were the ones that were suffering through all of this, not knowing what was happening, not knowing where they were going to be, who their coach was going to be, what kind of offense they were going to run, whatever, right? And so um, I did say to the administration, look, if you just need somebody to, to step in and take over while we figure this all out, I gladly will do that um, and we'll, we'll continue this program going. To start next month. For everyone on the scoreboard, I am Blake O'Rulian and we will see you all on Tuesday.